Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Members of the European Parliament find a new line of attack against Strasbourg. Britain and Germany demand EU cracks down on benefits tourism. Russian tip-off saves Russian oligarchs £2 billion but shows evidence of insider trading during Cyprus levy crisis. Canadian Inuit fury as European Union courts uphold a ban on imports of seal products. Plus, legislation amendments on greenhouse gas trading will have an impact on passenger flights. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, the discussion somehow continues in spite of all reason and common sensibilities. In this article, we report on a new tack being taken by MEPs as they try to persuade the Commission that spending £180 million a year to transport the European Parliament between Brussels and Strasbourg once a month is a silly idea. It beggars belief that the EU project has so deftly been mismanaged and even in the gleaming light of the European fiscal fireball it's still our learned Euro emperors appear unable to grasp the fact that it simply isn't working. A wise man once said, it is far better to be thought of as a fool than to open one's mouth and remove all the doubt. Theresa May, the Home Secretary, has convinced her counterparts in Germany, Austria and the Netherlands to campaign for tighter restrictions to migrants' access to welfare handouts and other state-funded services. <laughs> well, good luck with that, Theresa, because it isn't going to happen ever. For any member state within Europe, the reason is simply quite clear and, in actual fact, quite fair. Each member state, once ascended, will sign the Human Rights Charter which means that all men are treated equally. It then becomes obvious that to discriminate against one man because of his country of origin is xenophobic, and that is how the EU courts would see it. Let's assume for a moment that the UK government guesses the inflow of Romanians and Bulgarians incorrectly, as it did in the case of Poland. Then, based on Polish migrants as a percentage of population, Britain would see a little over one million Bulgarian and Romanians arriving with full entitlement to benefits and services. Now that will make Theresa May a very popular lady. Something doesn't add up when it comes to the depositors levy imposed via the Cypriot government. Let's take a quick look at what we now know. Michael Saris was appointed to government office as finance minister only one month before the levy announcement took place. During the open meetings between the Cypriot ministers and the EU Troika, no mention was made of the imposition of a levy upon depositors. Once the Cypriot government made the announcement, all banking transactions were halted. And yet, immediately prior to the cessation of banking transactions, Russian oligarchs removed £2 billion from Cypriot banks. We reported that in the months run up to the levy, Russian investors' monies were all but removed from the Cypriot banking system. Now, in this article, we report on the £2 billion removed by the Russian oligarchs and leave you to make up your own mind as to whether this looks like a straw man fronting an insider deal. The General Court of the European Union issued a statement saying it rejected a challenge from a group that includes the Canadian Fur Institute, the seal processing industry and one of Canada's largest Inuit groups. Terry Oudler, president of the National Inuit Organization, issued a statement saying the ruling does little to protect the Inuit. Going on to say, We Inuit have been telling the EU all along that the ban is not good for us, Oudler said. But their colonial, holier-than-thou attitude towards us and their self-serving interests has not resulted in fair or just process for the Inuit. This article looks at the delicate balances that are needed to maintain the relationship between the native peoples and the animals. In our legislation section, new amendments to the European Union Emissions Trading System, or EU ETS. 
The decision temporarily deferring enforcement of the ETS directive is designed to ensure that action is not taken against aircraft operators which do not meet the directive's reporting and compliance obligations arising before 1st of January 2014 in respect of incoming and outgoing flights. The European Commission believes that this decision will give space for progress at the International Civil Aviation Organization Assembly, which is due to take place in September 2013. Today in our video library, as you know, we have written and produced a new documentary, Betrayed, which we have submitted to the Operation Paul Revere contest at Infowars.com. We thought it would be interesting to take a look at some of the other videos that have been produced and so throughout the month of May I will pick out a daily Operation Paul Revere contest entry and provide a link to it on YouTube. Now speaking of YouTube, you could really help us a great deal with our documentary and contest entries by subscribing to our channel, rating our film Betrayed, either like or dislike, but I would prefer like please, and most importantly, sharing it with as many people as you possibly can. So, without further ado, today's video, which I have added to our Operation Paul Revere YouTube playlist, is Prophecy Heard by Graham Haywood and Shortcut Films. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the words section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below. <laughs>